Hey guys, it's Cece, and today I'm here to update a video. So recently I posted a video on my channel where I reacted to an older video that I had made, a video about authors that I felt I really needed to read. If you want to go watch that reaction video, I highly encourage it. It's one of my favorite videos that I've made this year, I think it's a lot of fun, so go check that out, I'll link it on the screen. But since I reacted to that video, discovered where I stood with all those authors, I thought it was about time to update authors that I really think that I need to discover. So in keeping with the theme of the last video, I have seven authors that I'm going to talk about. These authors are all authors where I have more than one of their books on my TBR. That's kind of my prerequisite for authors I need to read. I want to read at least two of their books. So with that out of the way, let's get started. So the first author that I want to talk about is Rebecca Poros, and I have three of her books on my TBR tentatively. I want to read her books because they're queer, first of all, but also because two of her existing books that are on my TBR are incredibly well-reviewed, and I am dying to read one of her books in 2019. I have wanted to read Like Water for a while. This is one that a lot of people talked about when it was released. I believe it features a bisexual main character and is a contemporary, but it was incredibly well-reviewed. Right now I'm still sort of tentative on the mystery of hollow places. I want to read that, but only if I really like her other books that I read. This one has a little bit more mystery than Like Water, from what I understand, but the one that I am so excited about for 2019 I actually already have, and that is The Wise and the Wicked. I want to read this book because it is about magical women, it's about witchy women. I also know that it's queer, which is why it has been on my anticipated list for a number of years, and I was really excited that I got to have a copy sent to me so I get to read it early. So. I really want to read Rebecca Poto, so I want to read her old work, but apparently it seems like I'm going to be reading her yet-to-be-released work first. Plus, uh, apparently this book features a character named Cece, spelled C-E-C-E, -E, so that's kind of a fun touch. The next author I want to talk about is Tessa Gratton, and this is one of those authors where I have two of her books on my list, but if I don't like one, I think it might be unlikely for me to try to read the other. So the two books of hers that I currently have on my TBR are The Queens of Innis Lear, as well as Strange Grace, which just also recently came out. These are both fantasy stories, they are both YA. The Queens of Innis Lear is like a female-driven retelling of sorts of King Lear, which interests me because Shakespeare, and I like that, but also it's had somewhat mixed reviews, as has Strange Grace. Strange Grace I know very little about, but I believe it features a polyamorous relationship, so that's kind of why it's been on my TBR. I've been interested in it for that. Basically, Tessa Gratton gets pretty solid reviews of her fantasy books. People seem to like her writing, but because they're sort of uneven reviews, I feel like if I read one of these books and don't like it, I might just kick the other off of my TBR. Unless you guys convince me otherwise, what is your favorite Tessa Gratton book? Let me know down in the comments below. Should I be reading her books? Yeah, let me know, basically. Next one I want to talk about probably is a relatively unknown author here on booktube. Um, a few of these are, honestly. I'm talking about authors that don't get quite as much uh, name-driven mention on, on booktube, but I really want to read at least two of his books, and I think that's telling. So I want to talk about Edgar Cantero. Um, Edgar Cantero writes satire, sort of. He writes humor, but dark humor. He first got on my radar with his book Meddling Kids because this is sort of a dark take on Scooby-Doo, which is like my fave. I adore Scooby-Doo. You should know this already about me. It's like a dark version of kids who solve mysteries. I believe there's also a female-female romance in this book, and every t every time I see this cover, I am just drawn to it. I'm drawn to knowing more. Um, I actually added this book to my TBR without realizing that I already had another book of his on my TBR, which is the Supernatural Enhancements, which I think is also a mystery, also a kind of out there mystery set at a mansion. I found this book when I was going through the library, I was just browsing, and I picked up this book, read the description, and was like, this is wild, and I have to read it. That's just how I feel every time I read a summary of a book written by Edgar Cantero. So, Meddling Kids is at the top of the TBR as far as these two books, but honestly, I'm just interested to know more about his writing, because 
everything he writes sounds wild and interesting. Now I want to move on to another author, Rivers Solomon. So they are on my list because of their book, An Unkindness of Ghosts, which gets recommended a lot around the queer circles of booktube. It's an incredibly queer book, but it is a less reviewed one. It's not as well known. Um, I also know that this book deals with sort of collective trauma, with race, and it is just like everyone who reads it loves it, at least the people I follow. So I'm interested in reading this book. I'm also incredibly interested in one of their upcoming books called The Deep, which is about an underwater society of uh, descendants of African slave women. Like that is the current blurb, the current short summary that is written on Goodreads. Both concepts of these books are super out there and interesting and I just really would like to read them. Next I want to talk about an author named Miriam Gerba. I actually talked about one of her books in my top 20 queer TBR and that was her memoir Mean. I don't have a lot to say about the concept of this memoir because it is a memoir and I don't know that much about Miriam Gerba, which is why I want to read more. But beyond that, I really also want to read her collection of stories, which is called... It's called Painting Their Portraits in Winter. I have a lot of story collections on my TBR, but this is just one that stands out to me as a point of interest, probably because I'm interested in the author outside of her fiction. She writes about sexuality, about race, about misogyny, and in general it's all just stuff that really interests me, which is why I have multiple books by her on my TBR. Second to last, I want to talk about an author named P. Jelly Clark. This author writes speculative fiction and it all sounds fascinating. I think he mostly writes for Tor.com and I actually have one of his books that's being published next year. Uh, one the book that basically drew my attention to this author, which is The Haunting of Tram Car 015, which is speculative fiction set in Cairo in 1912, which is just already fascinating, but I have a couple more of his books on my TBR as well. There's also The Black God's Drums and A Dead Djinn in Cairo. I've been discovering more and more, especially in the last year, that I really like novellas. I really like innovative novellas, and every single description I have heard of any of his books is so weird and wonderful and I also appreciate that a lot of them are set in Cairo which is a place I have not read a lot about as far as like books being set there but because I have this book it does mean that his newest book will probably be the one that I read first and then if I really like this I'm gonna go back and read some of his older stuff. And the final author I'm going to talk about is Dahlia Adler. I cannot believe I haven't read Dahlia Adler yet. It's it's absolutely absurd for the amount of time I have spent on the queer booktornet. So I have read a short story by Dahlia. One of her short stories was in... It was in All Out, and it was one of my favorite stories of this entire collection. It was one that was set in, like, the 90s at a concert. Oh! This just reminded me that I have read a short story written by Tessa Grattan, and I didn't really like it. Okay, so there's a concern for Tessa Grattan. Molly's Lips was the short story that was written in here that I really liked, but I haven't read any of her longer fiction, so I really want to read Under the Lights. That is a definite one that I want to read, and I also want to read Out on Good Behavior. I believe that one is new adult as opposed to young adult, but both of these are female-female romances about queer girls and the thing is, I look up to Dahlia Adler so much as a person on the queer book internet. As far as like creating resources for queer teens, for queer adults, she impresses me every single day. Plus, I have already loved a small bit of fiction that I've read by her. So, 2019, hold me to it. I am definitely going to read at least one book by Dahlia Adler. It has to happen. But that is it. Those are all of the authors that I want to talk about. The new authors that make up my authors I need to read list. Last time I did this, it took me three years before I checked in to see how I was doing. So, hey, maybe you'll see me in three years reacting to this video. I guess we'll have to find out. What are some authors on your must-read lists? Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in another video very soon. Bye!